Okay, here's the inspiration tray. This belongs to a friend of mine and she asked me to make one like it, but a different size. It's about 16 inches wide by 22 inches long. It's big. Just in comparison, this is the mid-century modern tray that I built a couple of years ago. Is put the link up in the corner for that. It fits entirely in it. My tray is about 12 by 18. What she wants is something that is 18 by 18. So it's going to be a little bit shorter this way, a little bit wider this way for a square tray. So it's going to be big and square and on the hefty side because it's not just a little tray that you throw up on a shelf when you're done with it. She's got one of those large stuffed ottomans that's very popular these days. It's almost the size of a coffee table and the tray will sit on it and with that weight and heft and size, it'll let you use the ottoman as a table some of the time or you can pick it up and use it as a tray at other times. Now, I don't know if you spotted it already, but there is a problem with this tray and that has to do with wood movement and grain direction. Briefly, the boards in the bottom, the grain is running this way but these boards on this lip, the grain is running that way. So let's talk for a minute about wood movement. So here's a chunk of tree. If this was a large log and you cut that up into boards, you'd end up with something like that. So this corresponds to the length that the tree grows. And here I picked a piece of ash, which has really prominent lines. You can see the grain lines on this. If you look at the end of the board, you can see the growth rings as if, as if you would cut the tree off in a slice. So every board has got long grain, and end grain and it comes from a tree it's a natural organic item and it changes throughout the year so over the course of the year your board is going to grow or shrink along with the humidity in the air where i live it gets hot and humid in the summer the board's going to grow a bit and in the winter time it becomes drier and less humid and the board is going to shrink again and i'm going sideways on purpose because it's almost always in the width that your board grows and shrinks. It doesn't really grow or shrink lengthwise. And yes, that depends on wood and it depends on a whole lot of things. I'm trying to keep this at a high level. So bringing it back to the tray, the long grain of the tray goes this way, but on this board, the long grain is going this way. So they are at cross purposes. So that's during the course of the seasons, if this, this board is going to, going to expand and contract in this direction, but this board, the grain is going this way, this is going to want to expand and contract in this direction. And if you have a tight glue joint here, that's going to be a problem because this is going to want to move and this is not. So is this tray going to fall apart? Probably not. Will it have a crack or two? Perhaps. Uh, as I said, I have no idea what this wood is. It's some tropical hardwood. Different woods expand and contract at different rates. I'm going to be building the tray out of ash, and I know that expands and contracts a fair bit. All that to say, I'm going to come up with a different solution for the piece at the end of the tray that I'm building. So this is the wood I'm going to be using. It's ash, as I mentioned. And about a week ago, I planed it down to seven eighths of an inch in thickness. I got this board from a buddy of mine and it had been in his barn. So I was wanted to make sure it had time, plenty of time to rest. Oh yeah, look at this one. A week ago, this was flat. That's another kind of wood movement. So I'm gonna have to spend some time on the jointer before planing some more. These boards are a little bit wider than the capacity of my joiner, so I have just a little ridge here along the side that I will be taking off with block plane. After planing to desired thickness, I took them to the joiner to edge the one side, and then over to the table saw to rip them to final width. I made these clamping calls a little while ago, just inch and a half pieces of plywood with tuck tape on it so the glue doesn't stick and that gives me something nice and flat where I can lay out my boards for the glue up. This is going to be too wide to fit through my planer after I glue it up so I really want to be careful with the glue up to get it as perfectly flat as I can. You could use dowels or biscuits or dominoes to align it, I've done that at times. 
This time I'm just going to use the calls and clamp it and make sure it stays flat. And now we get to leave it for a couple hours for the glue to dry. So I let it dry overnight, so let's get the clamps off and hopefully it is nice and flat. A little scraping. And a little sanding. Despite my best efforts, sometimes things just don't go to plan. And on this channel, we show our mistakes. I've just got one joint here that just didn't work out. It's just not flush enough. Could try digging in with the uh, sander and then you're gonna have a surface like that. I'm just not wanting something like that. So it's simple to just cut the joint and re-glue it. This time I'm gonna use some dowels to make sure it definitely stays aligned. I'm not even gonna lose that much time because I have a couple of knots that I need filling with epoxy. I was gonna do that afterwards, but I'm just gonna do that now and then we'll take care of it during this process. This knot is pretty tiny, but this one does go all the way through. So I put some tuck tape on the bottom to prevent leaking. I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun so the wood is nice and warm. That'll let the epoxy flow in quicker and easier and away we go. Then with the epoxy fully hardened, I'm going to sand it down flat and then I'm going to send these through the planer once more for just a really light touch. I'm going to use my Dowel Max jig to drill the dowel holes now for aligning these two pieces. Quick test fit with just a few dowels. And it is perfectly flush. I've also put pencil marks where all the dowel holes are later because I will be cutting this later and I wanna make sure I don't cut into a dowel. And then later on we unclamp. And the result is nice and flat. Just need to scrape away some glue. So earlier we talked about wood movement. So this is the rough shape of the tray. And I can put a, a lip around it this way, no problem. But I don't want to put the lip like this across the end. I don't want the lip going like this. I want the lip going like that. So I made this big enough that I can cut this end off here and this end off here and put those on top to be the lip, so they will be going in the right direction. I'm gonna make a cut right here, and then I'll have one piece here for the lip, and then I will later rip a piece off there for the other lip. I've reset the saw to an inch and a half, and now I will take the off cut, and I will cut the piece for that end, and then this piece for this end. And instead of pushing record, I pushed stop on the camera. So you'll just have to use your imagination that this is what happened. And I got my four strips. Two of them long grain, two of them cross grain. And I waited till now to sand because I didn't want to lose all these marks that showed me where the dowels were. So I did not cut through a dowel. So I'm going to put on the long grain pieces first on the sides. And then I will trim these to fit, sneaking up on a nice tight fit. I'm going to use the long clamp just to keep the board from sliding left to right. I'm going to let this set up for about a half an hour or so, so that I can then take out the two big clamps and have access to fit in the sides. You can see how the grain lines up. This piece was cut from this end and I'm going to try to match the grain up as much as possible when I fit it in. So I'm gonna cut a little bit off this side and then a little bit off that side. And then we'll glue in this side. And then this side. And then it's wait for the glue to dry again time. These are the poles that we're going to be using for handles on this tray and they are metric so they are 160 millimeter centers. Luckily I have a tape measure which is metric as well as imperial and we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 
455 millimeters. So 455 minus 160, 295. Divide that in half, 147 millimeters. my holes were just a little bit too far apart by like a half a millimeter and I'm just going to do a little wiggling with the drill just to make it just a little bit the base on it will cover up a fair bit but try again Here we go. Handles on and ready for some finish. So previously I did some test finishing on some wood and I showed my friend that and they picked the early American so that's the stain that I'm going to be using to cover the tray. Mix it well, wipe it on, wait 15 minutes and wipe it off. So. <laughs> After staining, I put on three coats of polyurethane and now it's ready for final installation of the hardware. So that's about it. And there's my friend's new tray. All I need to do now is drop it off at her place and return the other one. And so again, a reminder how the original inspiration tray has a, a border here where it's going at cross grain to the body of the tray, whereas here, these boards are going this way, the tray is going this way, and these little end pieces are short pieces where the grain is all going this way. So this whole thing will expand and contract this way with the seasons together, so there should be no breaks between here and here. So that's about it for this one. If you're interested in trays, maybe check out this video where I made a mid-century modern tray complete with downloadable templates, so it's a real easy beginner project. And we'll see you on the next one.